I think over the past 20 years, there's probably three areas where leadership styles have been influenced and changed significantly. The first would be in, in the area of globalization, the second, visibility, and the third, in terms of speed. In terms of globalization, I think over the past 20 years, all of us as leaders have had to learn how to communicate with people in many, many different countries and many different cultures. And so understanding the audience and understanding how to communicate with people to have understanding and impact is something that I think we've probably had to master much more in the past 20 years. The second area that I think we've had to focus on much more strongly is the whole question of visibility. As leaders, we are constantly on stage. Every minute of every day, we are highly visible. It is a much more transparent world and a world where people expect much greater transparency. So we have to live with the fact that at any point in time, we're highly visible to audiences right across the world. And that has quite a dramatic impact in terms of the way we have to think about leadership and our behavior and our language and our practices. And the third area, perhaps which is much more striking over the past five to 10 years, is the whole issue of speed. By the time I finished this interview, it could be seen by people in 140 countries around the world, and it could be interpreted 140 different ways. So the degree to which we're prepared to deal in crisis particularly, with communications and the speed at which we have to wrestle with such a diverse global audience to me is probably the most dramatic change of the past 20 years. I think in looking at a modern business leader today, the key attributes that we need to really think about are firstly, the importance of having a strong foundation in terms of values. Values are what drive the beliefs of an organization, uh, the sense of feeling, the sense of purpose, what an organization means to society. So I think the first attribute a leader has to really get right is to make sure that the values as articulated on paper are reflected in the behaviors and activities of the organization. That sense of values gives a strong foundation for leadership. I think then the next challenge is to be able to articulate a compelling vision. Uh, Kevin talks in his book, The Language of Leaders, about the importance of being able to communicate to people in a way where they're inspired. And this clarity about the future, where are we going? What's the story about this company in five years or 10 years or 15 years is really important. And I think over the years I've learned, it isn't just about that sense of vision. It's about having a great clarity in a way where people get excited about it. I think beyond that, then what we're looking to do as leaders is to be able to tell stories, to be able to communicate with people in a way where they develop a deeper understanding of what the organization is about, what its plans are, and how it's going to be successful. And perhaps something that we've learned more in today's world is the degree to which people expect us to be truly authentic. That is that what I say correlates with the behavior of myself as an individual, the behavior of the company in terms of society. And that, that, the genesis of all of that to a great extent today is this whole question of trust. I think we have seen in recent years a big fall in terms of trust, not only of business leaders, but of leaders in the public sector and in government. So there's a massive challenge for us going forward to rebuild that trust. And that trust will be built and strengthened based on what we do and how we do it and how we behave within society. I think the question of whether a leader is born or made is a fabulous question on the basis that I think we've all learned that over time we develop our skills, we develop new insights. And I think some people start out on the rugby field, on the soccer pitch and show themselves to have a lot of leadership skills. But the leadership that we can have at the early stages of our career is a very different sense of leadership that's required as you lead a big organization where you have got to make contact with people in so many countries, with so many different cultures and so many different beliefs. So I think to me, the key thing about whether we're born or made as leaders is our ability to learn and develop over time. That to me would be probably the most important point. But I guess when I think about the great leaders that I've seen in the course of my life, the one that I constantly come back to as a great leader uh, is Nelson Mandela. And at what point in his life did he exhibit extraordinary leadership? To me, at different stages, he exhibited different sort of leadership qualities that culminated perhaps in a, a fantastic 
uh, leadership style and approach uh, as he became president of South Africa. Uh, but again, I think there were clues in his evolution about that leadership potential. And uh, again, I think as the book suggests, and to me one of the great things about the book, The Language of Leaders, is how it brings out this, uh, this thought that leadership is a journey. We don't ever get to be perfect leaders. We get to be leaders for our time, and we're faced with the challenge and the excitement of improving our leadership style. And perhaps one of the most important things for us to learn, that we don't get taught in business school, that we don't get taught at home, is the importance of communicating in a way that inspires all of the audiences that we deal with. When I think about my, 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 my leadership style, I think in a way the judge of one's leadership style is all of the people who you employ and the customers that you serve. I tend to think very much of having leadership style where I like to think that I'm highly visible, that what I stand for in terms of values is well understood and is translated into how I spend my time and how I behave within society and the community. Uh, it's a leadership style that probably uh, always has a sense of enthusiasm, passion. My glass is always half full. No matter how things are, I always see the positive way of doing things. Uh, and I hope to a great extent what, what I want wherever I go, whether it's dealing with people on a construction site or dealing with an audience of management. Uh, what is it I want to achieve? I want to achieve an outcome which is when we're done, they feel more inspired, more enthused and more ready to do their job than they did before I got there. I think for anyone who is thinking about being a leader, the first thing that I would say is I think it is a gift. It is a privilege to be able to lead an organisation. And you have to think about it in that sense. It is a very important role that brings with it a sense of duty, a sense of responsibility. But that's the serious side of leadership. The much more exciting side of leadership is the potential you have to make a big difference, to have a big impact on your organisation and on society. And at the heart of being able to do that is the need for you to be a brilliant communicator, for you to, for you to be able to have a big impact on your audience, to inspire your audience. And that's why I'd say one of the, the things about the book The Language of Leaders is it provides a whole series of practical steps that can help you improve. And for anyone who wants to be a leader, my last piece of advice would be, remember, it is a journey. It is a journey of continuous improvement. You take each piece of learning, each experience, and you build it into a new story, a new experience to make you a better leader.